Welcome everyone. Sorry we're sat in the dark. In fact, it's just like being in the judging room because <laughs> often you can't see the screen that well. So hopefully you can see the screen, even if it means you can't see me too well, but we'll work with that. Uh, so you think you can judge. The whole purpose behind this presentation was to give a bit more insight into all of the different busts that occur in formation skydiving. So four-way, eight-way and BFS. Uh, some of them are VFS specific, but the majority of them apply across all of the disciplines. Hopefully it'll be useful for competitors, anyone that's thinking about becoming a judge, and any coaches as well, because a lot of the coaches really don't understand the rules. So <laughs> hopefully they'll watch online if they're not here today. Uh, just a bit about myself, uh, a lot of you only know me as a judge, but I've been around for a few years. I used to jump. Cheer from the Okra Turtles, some of you are here. Okra Turtles 8 way. I did some free fly B, thanks for the photo me. Speed 8, that went great. <laughs> I did a few World Cups, I did one with 8 way FS, one for speed skydiving, and I still fly indoors, so that was 4 way in Bahrain in 2018. The main reason I got into judging was because as a competitor, I probably suffered every bust under the sun and then got really curious about how they all worked and wanted to know more about the judging process behind it. So what made me go from this to that when we're sat in the judging cave? That's normally what it looks like on a weekend. I'm curious to know what are people's preconceptions about judges? Be brave. <laughs> we do. Uh, that reminds me, audience participation is rewarded with Harry Bow. Annoyingly, not supposed to be bribes. No. <laughs> yeah, but we're clearly never open to bribes. We're giving back. <laughs> really, we're just borrowing Harry Bow at competition. How many Harry Bows have had over the years? <laughs> yes. If you answer a question later, you can have some Harry Bow. <laughs> So, what is it really like being a judge? There is a lot of sitting at tables, a lot of sitting in front of laptops. It's super glamorous. Sometimes they give us wine, which is nice. Uh, but unfortunately, we can't really drink when there's still rounds to judge the next day. So all we do is catch up when the competition's finished. Sometimes we stand on chairs. Sometimes we have to live judge and judging from a side angle isn't great. And that also means sometimes you sit on top of the antechamber. That was at Belgian Nationals one year. I was also competing, so that was fun, climbing up and down. <laughs> Still. So, question. Who needs to understand the rules? Everyone. Any specifics? <laughs> but yes, everyone, in short. Anyone? Teams. Teams. Judges. <laughs> <laughs> Who said judges? Coaches. Just have some hair Who else? Drop zone. Drop zone. Yes. So. For future reference, and especially anyone watching online later, uh, this should hopefully be more visible to you guys. The rules are essentially broken down into three parts, as far as what we're concerned. You'll see at the top, really important writing, the holder of a sporting license. Any of you that go to these competitions. You acknowledge that you know and understand the FAI sporting code. <laughs> so the sporting code, there's the general section, Section five, which is the bit that's specific to parachuting and indoor skydiving, and then the relative discipline rules. None of those documents are that big, and they're available on the ISC website. They've changed their name. So the reason why it's important to know the rules, here is a good case example that happened at the World Championship in Australia last year, 2018. So when the dive pool was printed, it looked like this. Hopefully you can see this grip. So normally outside center, his grip is on point. Any of you who do four-way, if you were gonna launch an H, what else might you do for the launch? 
more Harry Potter years. <laughs> Catch up, guys. This unfortunately meant that some very well-trained teams really took some heavy busts because H was one of the first points on one of the draws. This has since been amended, so as you can see on the right, point can take OC or OC can take point. But it's little subtle changes like that that happen year on year that can make big differences to score sheets. My next question is, who do I have here so I know how basic to keep this or what I can gloss over? Put your hand up if you're a competitor in formation skydiving. Put your hands up if you've never competed in formation skydiving. Put your hand up if you're potentially interested in judging. Some people. Okay. Thank you, judges. So, in that case, I will talk about the basics a little bit, uh, just to break things right down. If it's a letter, it's a random, it's worth one point. If it's a block, it's got a start, a middle, and an end, and it's worth two points. And then subgroups of the bit in the middle, like this middle bit. So you might break into two pairs, so that's two subgroups. You might break into a three and a one, also two subgroups. We'll get to that later. The first thing you want to know when you're judging at a competition, we'll start at the beginning of the skydive. When is the start of working time? For all of these slides, I've put in what the definitions are from the rules. I'm not just going to read them off the slide, but hopefully it can be used as a resource for anyone that's watching online or maybe catching up afterwards, because there isn't really a guidebook in the rules to these are the busts and these are all how they all happen. It's all down to interpretation and there might be something on this page that links to something three pages on. So everything I'm going to cover is my interpretation, but hopefully it will give you the abbreviated idea of what we're looking for as judges when we're judging any of your footage. So the start of working time, it's when the first person leaves the aircraft that isn't the cameraman. So if the cameraman falls off early, the clock hasn't started. As long as we can still see when the team eventually get out, we're fine. The tunnel is slightly different in that it's when both feet are up and flying. Here is an example to show you. I want someone to shout go when they think that working time starts. <laughs> they actually did pretty well after that happened. We were amazed. It was great. So if we can't determine the start of working time, then the team is in trouble. Uh, this used to happen a lot more back in the day before this rule was a thing. So <coughs> I'm not going to name any teams or nations that may have done this. <laughs> the cameraman would sometimes look slightly, slightly off angle and then would turn his head as soon as the team had left the aircraft. We all know that as teams are getting quicker and quicker, it can come down to less than half a second sometimes as to who wins a competition. So every time that tiny little fraction of time was shaved off by the cameraman, it was giving teams an advantage. So this penalty clause was brought in to say that your score will be brought, like, rounded down by 20%. So if you scored 10 points, you'll come away with eight. If you scored 11, that would be a penalty of 2.2, which would then become a three point deduction. So once you get to the top teams, this is a bit of a savage penalty. Uh, it also means I don't have an example to show you because teams stopped doing it once <laughs> this was broken. It occasionally happens by accident, though, if cameramen have got the wrong amount of zoom on their camera. I have seen it once in competition, but I didn't have the footage. On the subject of camera issues, I want to make something really clear to teams. Most of the time, camera issues do not happen in isolation. Teams will often talk about how their cameramen cost them points, a lot of the time, the team is responsible for that as well. But here are some examples of what we see in competition. Uh, the main bit in this rule... The main bit is clearly presented throughout. So, come in! Come in! <laughs> so, here's an example of camera angle. As you can see there, they've launched a shape 
They've launched a pee, a side body. This grip up here is invisible because a helmet's in the way. That's why we got a new cameraman. <laughs> <laughs> is it awkward because it's true? <laughs> Uh, unfortunately, it also cost them the second point because the separation <coughs> wasn't clearly presented either. So just to go back to that definition, the point has to be clearly presented and it must be preceded by clearly presented total separation. So if you miss the first one and you don't see four separate bodies before the second point, you lose that as well. Ooh. This is what we see more at UKSLs. This one actually isn't that bad. Some of the stuff we see where, like, stood up against the screen like this, desperately trying to see any points. It's a common misconception that it's the judge's job to award busts, but we do try really hard to look for points most of the time. <laughs> Grip visibility is not just an issue on a skydive, it's also an issue in the wind tunnel. You'll also see how horrendously difficult some of the camera is in the wind tunnel. Uh, this general area, you, it's, it's as bad as it looks on here, basically. You can see helmets, shoes, and gloves, but you can't see people. It's really difficult to see if they've completed the formation. But also, this camera has a blind spot, so obviously the tunnel would continue. And hopefully this will play. There we go. Those grips were completely off frame. This team got very upset about this. <laughs> and they're still very upset to this day. I'm, I'm genuinely sorry if you're watching this, Doug. I, I do, I'd make the same decision again, but I am sorry because it's... <laughs> <laughs> there is a, a section in the rule that also says for indoor that you will clearly present to the camera. So anyone that's competing indoor, I'd thoroughly recommend that you use your speed check minutes at the beginning of a competition not just to work out what speed you're flying at, but also to check that you're flying in view of the camera. Uh, it's happened before at some like, major competitions where if you fly too high, if you fly above like, where the door frame is, you're out of view of the camera. So it's not as uncommon as you might think. Here's just another example that sometimes we just don't know what's going on. This was a freeze frame that we had uh, of Jazz Republic, I think, at the end of one of their rounds. And this is actually a block two, and we had to decide if this was complete or not based on that freeze frame. <laughs> Just a mess of people, it's fine. Non-stationary grips are often one of the most contentious ones that we get. Uh, I'm gonna start with the definition of a grip. It's a handhold, which is important. It has to be a hand on a grip. Um, it talks about it has to be on an arm, a leg, or a foot. I'll show you the diagram later of what defines those things. Uh, but there's an example here. Uh, I need you to watch this guy and his right hand. Oh, oh no! <laughs> it happens. This one isn't so much the team member missing the grip, it's how you as a judge define what stationary contact is. So I suppose everyone understands as a concept if you put your hand flat on the wall, and back off, it's stationary. If you hit it from an angle and off again, it might still be stationary, but the, the shallower your grip gets, the more likely it is to be non-stationary because it will be sliding. Is that clear? If everyone can watch the guy in the blue suit at the top of the screen, this was a, a particularly famous jump, or flight, and was pretty contentious at the time. Wait. <laughs> oh. 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 No. This is slowed down to 50% speed, by the way. A non-stationary grip, really, is just a type of incomplete formation. It's whether you deem it to be a stationary handhold, whether it's complete or not. <coughs> incomplete formation is one of the few things that is actually defined, but we'll brush over that. Which one is this? Uh, incorrect formation, uh, we're going to see, they're going to try and build a D. 
Uh, the issue is going to be at about 3 o'clock on the screen. <laughs> I'm enjoying all of the dramatic gasps. Keep it up, guys. <laughs> Uh, or incorrect formation. Um, so, <laughs> the technical term we like to use in the UK is dangly bits. <laughs> Hopefully this will become clear. So there's a lot of kind of round shaped formations and the general rule, well, the rule in four way is that there should never be a dangly limb in the middle of one of those round formations. We see it quite a lot with inexperienced teams that they pick up the wrong grip and it's like they wave to the judge with uh, a dangly bit in the middle that hopefully this will freeze frame on as time goes on. Sometimes it actually happens at a world level as well. There we go! <laughs> Let's see. There we go. Nice dangly arm right in the middle of that formation. Dangly bits, the technical term. So the little diagram that I promised you, this uh, humanoid that has been working his shoulders, uh, this clearly defines clearly what an arm is, what a leg is. As far as belly is concerned, a foot is also a leg, but in VFS, feet are defined differently because some grips are <laughs> foot specific rather than leg specific. Uh, occasionally a high grip happens. Uh, it's more common in the tunnel because there's not a rig as a... <laughs> as an obvious prompt as to where the torso is. So in the tunnel, often people will build a side body and accidentally take a shoulder. Sometimes people will take a butt grip. Or there's an example for you here. They're gonna finish turning the block and then build the random O and take a look at it on the right hand side. <laughs> Why is no one gasping more at this? <laughs> <laughs> it's a handle. <laughs> it, it's on the webbing of the harness uh, and definitely not the leg. Uh, separation is what I referenced where we like to see everyone to be separate at the same time. Uh, sometimes some of the lower experienced teams will just forget to let go or will be a bit quick off the mark and will move on before someone else has. Uh, it's the black rig I think you want to be watching. <laughs> oh, this guy. I hate that it's not the clearest example. I really struggle to find a good one for this. But it happens surprisingly often. So they've built their first formation and then this guy is going to let go and pick up his next grip before everybody else has let go. It's normally super subtle, but occasionally you get the team that just does not let go at all. Secondary incomplete separation isn't technically a term, but it's something I've come up with for this presentation. So the, the time we normally have incomplete separation is when someone is late, they'll do like an incomplete formation and someone's so focused on trying to finish building it and the rest of the team has moved on. So they then have incomplete separation as a secondary bust. So they often come in pairs. So if you see a score sheet and there's two busts side by side, it's almost always this. I said before this presentation the teams wouldn't be named. <laughs> <laughs> but I couldn't find the raw footage of this one and I think I shamed them with the same video two years ago. So I don't feel... <laughs> I'm not on this one. <laughs> I come up later, don't worry. It's also, yeah, there's only six people. <laughs> oh, that's the least of their problems. <laughs>
me. Terrible timing, man. <laughs> if Mohammed we'll play it again. To, Don't worry. If Mohammed won't go to the mountain, <laughs> the mountain will come to Mohammed. Thank you, Martin. How much May I award you? Oh. Your FL, I judges. <laughs> to that later in the bar, I'm sure. <laughs> Let's just watch it again, it's that good. <laughs> Why is he not here? <laughs> Why did he stop the <laughs> So then, this, this purple reed gets confused and tries to build the claws. So then point two is bust as well, because it's not complete. <laughs> and she's still holding on. <laughs> so then point three is also a bust because everyone else started building the third point while she was still holding on to the second point. They did a fantastic Swiss better after that, by the way. <laughs> it, it gets a lot better, but I'm not going to include it. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Emissions very rarely happen as well because it comes with a penalty. Normally, they happen by mistake. So there's two types of emission. There's you just miss something out altogether, or the other one is you substitute it with a different move that is easier and it gives you a time advantage. So if they substituted it with something that's deemed to be harder, you could say incorrect formation, because they've built something totally different. But if it gives them an advantage, it goes down as an emission bust. Time for some VFS. Um, for anyone that speaks VFS in the room, the dive is B-L-A-E-15. To everyone else, random, 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 block. <laughs> random, random, random. And they've missed out the fourth one before moving on to the block. And they do that on every single page because they dirt dived it wrong. <laughs> Which is a shame, because it's really nice otherwise. Uh, we've covered all of the different busts that can happen on the individual formations. Uh, remember when I talked about the block, saying there's the top, the bit in the middle, and then the end? They also come with busts. Uh, basically, it's just not doing the middle bit correctly, as it's shown on the dive pool. I don't remember what this is, but we're going to find out, I'm sure. Ah! <laughs> Inter not visible. <laughs> we saw them launch it. How much do you think that was for capitalism? <laughs> Subjective, really. Uh, you can't see it that well on the screen, but you can actually see all of the grips are there. It doesn't matter that all of the people aren't fully on the screen, but the grips are there. They'll have got the first point. But the inter requires that the top half do a 540. You don't actually see that happen. So the bust carries on to the second point because they bust the inter. This one, the requirement for the inter, uh, it's the first thing they're launching out the door. It's the old 13, which is an offset spinner. The middle pair are supposed to do a 360. not a bust because the outside spinners make up the difference so it's a really mean sheet that you know the outside spinny people will hate you for but for anyone here that jumps you've done a, a, a block four where everyone's supposed to do a 360 but you kind of cheat it it's the same thing you've hosed the other guys but the turns relative to each other is actually okay uh, assisted grips uh, contacts allowed between subgroups. Uh, subgroups must remain intact and assisting handholds are not permitted. So everyone thinks an assisted grip means that 
it's like assisting you in some way. It's also an assisted grip if you're just touching someone that you shouldn't be touching. The general rule is hand holds by the jumper on their own body is allowed. You can touch yourself as much as you like, but no one within your own subgroup. Uh, center points. This gets a bit weird and complicated, but there's a fantastic example. Short on time, guys. <laughs> Here's the definition. It's a bit long and wordy. The degree shown are approximately that amount of the circumference of the subgroup center point to be presented to the center point of the other subgroups. So this is the whole thing about doing the full turn relative to everybody else. Hopefully this example can clear it up a bit. They're launching the old one. Oh. They've both just done a 180. Uh, so for those of you that know the block, it's meant to be both pieces do a 360. If you track the center point of one of the pairs, and I'll try and do this on screen, this one, it's only gone 180 around the center point of the other subgroup. It's a very complicated one, and it gets especially complex as, you know, the jumps get faster. But I'm short on time, so I'm not going to go into it. <laughs> I really regret putting this in here now. Uh, <laughs> it's a VFS dive that's super controversial. There's been a change at ISC as of this morning, which means that any ambiguity around it has been cleared up. The dive pool says it starts with a head down open accordion with a sit guy on the end. That then breaks into an open accordion in the middle that does a 360 with one head down guy and one head up guy, and they have to be separate. The people on the outside then transition 180, and they rebuild when the middle bit's done a turn. Here we have a video where you... Wow. <laughs> Sorry. Now you don't see the separate people because the orange guy is transitioned before the blue guy is let go. And then he also holds on to the middle bit to do his transition at the end as well. There's also an assisted grip in there as well. <laughs> See where he touches his peace partner when he's not meant to? <laughs> Another specific to VFS, uh, it's not officially called an orientation bust, it's just incorrect formation. But if you're not, you know, all the way head up or all the way head down. His torso is about level with the green and the blue guy, so you can assume, even though you can't see the horizon or the ground, that he's head up. Uh, the purple one, not so much. <laughs> There's a proposed change to introduce the hourglass to the rules, which VFS people could look at when it's officially written in. Uh, but just to give a little bit of leeway on what's considered head up and head down, Anyone that's flowing head up, you know that you can still fly stable while leaning forward, slightly leaning back, uh, just to give a bit more, well, a bit less ambiguity. The final one's grip line. We've got one formation in the dive pool where it's designed that this guy has to pick up a foot on the other side of the line. And here's an example of where they've cheated it. <laughs> So by the time this guy and this guy have transitioned, this foot has shifted forward of the grip line. Uh, the whole reason that rule is there is to stop people cheating it and picking it up from the other side. And end of working time, I'm going to skip the videos because you'll get the idea. These two freeze frames are a hundredth of a second apart. Can you tell which one, well, for starters, would you say this is a point if that was the freeze frame? Across 
Ignoring that hand. <laughs> the point is, you can't tell from a freeze frame. A freeze frame does not constitute stationary contact, so if you're unsure about whether the last point is correct, you have to watch it again, basically. And then I want to put this on a t-shirt. I'll just leave you to read that. <laughs> it's not up to the judges to see the points. It's up to you guys to show us. Who wants to have a go? No one? Come on, Hicks. Come on. Ready? 11. 11? Yes. Okay. Don't hit ready to judge yet, because I need to Is tell you the rest yet? of your buttons. Okay. To start working time, so this is going to be a tunnel video, okay. it's when they, you know, lift both of their feet up and enter the tunnel. Start of working time is the arrow on the right. Okay. Point is the same button. Bust is the arrow on the left. Okay. Are you ready to judge? What's the question? What's the draw? What like? Yeah. Oh, can I press it? Yeah. <laughs> you have sheets. You have sheets. Is it round? So it is nine BPA. Oh. If you find that one, oh. what does that oh, yeah. tell people? If it's a nine a BPA, that's five points. Any thoughts from the competitors? What that means the video is going to be like? Uh, <laughs> Sorry, guys. Enjoy nine BPA. <laughs> Uh, I'll move. I'll move. Uh, ready to judge, which is top left? Yeah, your head's going to be. I know, I'm going to move. I'm going to move. Some two people aren't ready to judge yet. Oh, uh, yeah, reach top left. Press it. One person still? Everyone just hit it again? So it's the right hand side to say when it starts and the same points. Two of you have given it 61 points in time. One of you has given it 59 points in time. I know it's difficult with the buttons, but does anyone think there were any busts in there? There was a big clue in the slideshow that I showed you earlier. How many busts do you think were in there? Just to shout some numbers out. Also from the audience? I got zero. <laughs> <laughs> I only, I only <laughs> so so uh, the the official score that went out uh, was sixty one points in time, bust down to fifty nine points, with two non stationary grips in there. Now I've actually rewatched this frame by frame, and there are about five in there, but they're literally not visible to the human eye. <laughs> <laughs> and this is why we have rules about certain speeds we can watch it at. It's quite often we'll have competitors bring us like a freeze frame from their phone at a competition to say, look, we did get the point. And it's like, yes, but that's like one frame at 60 frames per second over 35 seconds. We, we can't see that when we're playing it. And the reason is to keep it fair across the board for everyone. Can we do? Can we no. do slow one, please? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Can we do round four? Yeah. Round four. Round four. Round four. Round four is exciting. This next one is a different size. Round, uh, it's going to be G2218. Which is a. Different tunnel. Different tunnel. So, ready to judge button? 
I don't remember which it is. They both. There we go. <laughs> Start time failed. Ready to judge again? <laughs> it's when the first person lifts both their feet. Don't override it. Help out from the uh, Someone else? needs to hit the start button. I'm going to move out the way. Oh, no. <laughs> 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 no, just keep it going for a few more. Try again, ready to judge? How consistent, how close do you have to be for it to... Okay, I've overwritten it. Just no, no, no. <laughs> oh yeah, so guys, ordinarily, you don't confer your scores. If we have any trainees in, we will talk about it. So the people who are officially on the judging panel, they will judge it, but then there'll be a lot of discussion afterwards as to why certain busts happened in certain places. You know, that's not bad. <laughs> Everyone's got nine points in time. Someone's put three busts in there, someone's put two, and someone's put one. <laughs> it doesn't pay to be nice. So the official score was uh, nine points, bust down to five. Uh, there was the incorrect insert, I assume everyone saw where it totally imploded. There was then incomplete separation of point six, that's secondary incomplete separation. I'm determined that's going to catch on. Uh, same again to point seven, where one person moved on before somebody else let go. And then it's an uh, incomplete formation, non stationary grip on the close of the 22 as well, where he kind of lands and slides. For the next one, again, it's going to be slower. Can we have number 15? Which for our panel is 11NE. <laughs> <laughs> Who wants Harry Bond to be my Yeah. Yes, yes. I might be a bit more generous. Fuck. <laughs> 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 Any issues from the audience with what was happening on that dive? Yeah. yeah, it wasn't separating. Anything else about the 11? Did we miss them? What was that, Bevan? They cog on every single page, so they turn the block the wrong way which is a bust on this particular one. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, that's what I was going to say. The correct score was they got 21 points in time. Bus down to 11. Oh, double, double bus. <laughs> <laughs> well, so they only actually take the bus on the second half of the block because it's the inter that's incorrect, the build is correct. But as well as that, there's a whole load of incomplete separation in there as well. Any other volunteers? And we'll switch to some outdoor footage. Yeah. The gentleman behind James as well. Fletch! I saw a hand and not a face. Is that just two people? Come on, Bevins. Bevin, Bevin, Bevin. Uh, videos of war. Uh, once you guys are settled in. Oh, oh no! Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this next one is. I'll talk you through the buttons again in a second. The dive is BJ2A. It's incorrect on your cheat sheet and just says BJ2, but there's an A in there as well. Are you talking them through it, Kat? <laughs> no, no, do it, do it. I don't remember which one was ready to join. So, ready to go yeah. that top left corner. Yeah. And then, bus, sorry, bus left corner. Oh, okay. Yeah, so right hand side for start yeah. and for points, and bus is the left hand button. When you said that was the start. Well, no, that's because they were ready to judge. Oh. Is everyone ready to judge? Oh, we're off. Oh. 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 <laughs> <laughs> How did you do? I was struggling enough just to press the right button when I've seen what's <laughs> going So, two of you have given it 24 points in time, one of you has given it 21. It was 23 points in time. <laughs> uh, bus down to 19. So there were four busts in there. A non stationary one, a high grip, there's an ass grip in there. <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, yes, two incomplete formations, including one right at the end. Oh, no. uh, just because these will probably be the last couple, uh, we'll do a little bit of eight way. We can do eight way round one. Yep, ready. What, ready when you guys are. Oh, sorry. No, don't hit ready. Oh, oh no. Uh, sorry. <laughs> well, they build some shapes. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me if you think the shapes look right. Uh, it is 22 D O J for anyone that speaks English. So that's your 22? Yeah. yeah. That's the D, the no hope diamond. Anything? <laughs> I'm going to put it on for a second viewing because this one is a bit different. Yeah, so normally there would be additional views there. How do I judge it again? <laughs> so remember how we talked about high grips? It's super common in eight-way. Uh, that people use harness grips to launch. Uh, so 
Sometimes they forget to let go of the harness and pick up the leg. You want it to go away? left hand at the back. Two busts. The cruel thing about it is if he actually realised halfway through, let go and picked up the leg grip, then the second point would be fine because he's correcting it to the right thing. The, the penalty doesn't carry through. There's a weird small print in the rules. Another reason why you should read. And who wants to try VFS before we get kicked out? Come on, VFS people. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Uh, VFS round two. The dive is 16B8. This is SDC call. I don't know, <laughs> no, no teams will be named. <laughs> what are the buttons? The buttons are top, cat, which one is it? Top left? What is it? 16 B8. So is this point? Yeah. You have to press that one top left. Wait, what's the start? The same as the point button. 16 B8. It still just grips on limbs. It's fine. What general busts did you see in there? I'm not going to stress about the number of busts. There was a lot of 16s. Uh, top of the 16. Like the first one out the door, first out the door as well, was, I think they were both head down. Okay, so you think it was an orientation issue on the 16? Yeah, on the first one. Okay. The first one was okay, no, the first one was. The, the first one wasn't okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, I never did it. And then, yeah, there was some, there was some, like, yeah, and some of the bees didn't. Oh, yeah, the bees, uh, there was some grip. Uh, visibility, I think, from the yeah, other bees somewhere. Yeah. yeah. Uh, they're kicking us out. We need to get packed up. But just to wrap up, that was. Uh, I don't even know how many that is. One, two, three, four. Uh, I, th I want to say 27, bust down to 18. Four. It was brutal. And VFS is brutal. <laughs> we're done. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>